Hi, my name is Bill Reichert and I'm a partner here at Pegasus Tech Ventures. Pegasus is a global venture capital firm dedicated to helping entrepreneurs around the world being as successful as they can possibly be. So we've launched this video series to share our experience as entrepreneurs and in, as investors to help out entrepreneurs all over the planet be even more successful. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top 10 mistakes of entrepreneurs sharing our experience again as entrepreneurs and what we've seen entrepreneurs all over the planet, even the most successful entrepreneurs sometimes make mistakes. So we wanna help you avoid as many of those mistakes as you can. So let's jump right in. So what's mistake number one? Mistake number one is most entrepreneurs are so fascinated by their product, by their technology, by their cool and elegant device that they spend too much time focused on their product and not enough time focusing on their customer. It's really important that you focus on providing value to your customer, understanding your customer's needs, understanding precisely who the right customer is for your product. One of the things I learned as an entrepreneur very early on is that believe it or not, customers don't buy products. Customers buy benefits. They don't care how cool or sexy your product is if it doesn't deliver value. So you need to be focused on your customers, your customers' needs, and the value you can deliver to your customers. Mistake number two. Mistake number two is that all too often entrepreneurs have delusions when it comes to the numbers that they present to investors. What sort of delusional numbers am I talking about? Well, first, Generally, entrepreneurs don't do a very good job of understanding their target market size. Frequently, an entrepreneur will Google the size of their market and then come in and pitch to us and say, we're gonna transform a $3.5 trillion healthcare market. You know that's delusional. That's not really the business you're in. Don't overstate the market size that you're going after. The fact of the matter is, we have never seen a company fail because their market is too small. Companies fail because they don't get enough customers. The next number that a lot of entrepreneurs miss is a good revenue forecast. Generally, entrepreneurs overestimate their revenue opportunity. You know, they think their market opportunity is $56 billion. And if we only get 2% of that market, we'll be a billion dollar company, right? Well, wrong. That's not how you're going to generate your revenues. Your revenues have to be generated from the bottom up, customer by customer, sale by sale, dollar by dollar. The third set of numbers that entrepreneurs frequently miss is their capital requirements. You know, it's almost always going to take longer and cost more than you hoped to get to where you want to be. So be careful about how you estimate the capital requirements for your company. Related to that is misunderstanding your sales cycle. A lot of entrepreneurs think it's going to be much easier to sell their product than it actually is going to be. After all, this is such a cool product, people are going to pound on our door to try to buy it. Generally, it doesn't work out that way. So don't overestimate how quickly you can sell and ramp up your revenues. And then last, you know, when you're talking to investors, frequently entrepreneurs have excessive expectations of what their valuation should be or can be. So do the research and understand where is the market today for a company like yours. What you got to make sure is that you are realistic about all these numbers, that you research comparable successful companies and you come out with projections that are realistic given the world that you're going into. Mistake number three is a lot of companies, they mess up their fundamentals. You know, as entrepreneurs, kicking off a startup company, it's, it's a novel experience. And you're being asked to do things that you've never done before, dealing with lawyers and governments and compliance and taxes and payroll. There's a lot of stuff you got to get your arms around as a first time entrepreneur. You want to make sure you don't mess up these fundamentals. So some of the critical fundamentals you want to make sure you get right. You want to make sure you understand the proper stock allocations among the founders and the restrictions that you want to put on yourselves. 
So believe it or not, you want to make sure that if one of you has to leave the company for some reason, if one of you, you know, some event causes one of your founders to disappear, you haven't lost all that equity from your company. Investors are going to ask this of you if you don't do it yourself. So one, make sure your allocations are reasonable across the founders. And two, make sure you put the appropriate restrictions on your founder stock so you don't wind up losing a bunch of founder stock if some event happens. Intellectual property protections are also critically important that you pay attention to right from the beginning. You cannot clean up an intellectual property mistake if you've already gone out in the world and talked about your proprietary technology. So make sure you get good advice as to what you have that is patentable and you get that process going right from the beginning. Or if it turns out you're going to do some form of trade secret, uh, type of protection, make sure you wrap that up carefully and identify what it is you're going to protect and how you're going to protect it right from the beginning in all of your relationships and all of your contracts. A lot of companies also mess up on the incorporation and legal compliance side. There are, you know, the different jurisdictions you have to pay attention to. In the US, generally, we want entrepreneurs to register in Delaware. Delaware is the easiest state for purposes of administration of a corporate entity, but you're probably operating in multiple states and you're gonna to have to register in those states as well, at least for tax purposes. Make sure you get that taken care of. Make sure you don't mess that up. If you mess these things up as investors, you know, we don't really want to have to clean up your mess. So make sure you get it done correctly. And that includes contracts with advisors, consultants, contractors. Make sure you get all the proper language in there so that you own everything that they produce and that you're in compliance with tax laws and other labor laws. So mistake number three is messing up your fundamentals. The secret to success here is make sure you get a good venture lawyer, a law firm that is comfortable with and has lots of experience dealing with startup companies and the venture capital community and all the compliance requirements that you're going to have. Mistake number four is bad hiring practices. So a lot of emphasis needs to be put on from day one on how you're going to build your team. Unfortunately, in the in the chaos that is a startup company, a lot of entrepreneurs wind up not doing the best job they can with hiring. You know, one of, one of the examples is, you know, hiring your buddies. It may well be that your university classmate is the best possible CTO for your company, but on the other hand, maybe that person is not quite right. So make sure you don't put in place these, these practices that might get you in trouble later. Hiring your buddies, hiring based on resume. And what we've learned is that resumes are highly unreliable as a way of understanding the skills and the character and the willingness to work hard for any given individual. Hiring based on skills. If you just look at somebody's skills base, you may be missing other characteristics that might not make them fit your organization. Or <laughs> a lot of entrepreneurs, you just hire on desperation, right? I need somebody now, please, please. You can do a lot of damage if you bring somebody into the company who's not right for the company. So don't hire on desperation. And certainly don't hire people who are followers, people who are just gonna do whatever you tell them to do. One of the things that we emphasize to entrepreneurs is even if you see yourself and your co-founders as the leadership team, you don't want to hire followers. You want to hire other leaders. You want to hire people who have the ability to take a leadership role in the in the role that you're going to give them and take responsibility and are accountable for delivering, executing, solving problems in their domain. If you build an organization of followers and everybody has to ask you what to do next, then you're going to be a bottleneck on your own growth. You want to be able to delegate out and trust and rely on all of your people to execute appropriately. So mistake number four is bad hiring practices. Make sure that you cultivate diverse thinking in your hiring. So you want skills, 
You want capabilities and experience, but you also want people who have the right attitude and have the willingness to take a leadership role, push back on you when it's appropriate, and drive their particular area to success. Mistake number five. Mistake number five is company culture. So lots of entrepreneurs talk a lot about company culture. Culture is a topic that is probably, you know, more discussed and less executed than any other topic in entrepreneurship. So it's not about talking about company culture, it's about activating your company culture. What do I mean by activating your company culture? You can't just get in a conference room, come up with a bunch of words, put it on poster board, put it on the wall, and assume we now have a company culture. That's not good enough. What you have to do is figure out what are your shared values. And so, you know, when I talk to entrepreneurs and I say, what's your company culture? It's really interesting. There is no one single recipe for the best company culture for any startup company. So you need to cultivate a, co a culture that's most appropriate for you. You and your co-founders are gonna start that. But as you grow and scale your company, you're gonna have to evolve your company culture. So you have to pay attention to it. You can't just put it up on the wall and assume that's our culture from now on. You have to pay attention on a regular basis to how the company is growing, how the team is growing. As you expand geographies, you expand you know, internationally, you're gonna have cultural evolution as well. So pay attention to the company culture and then activate it by making sure that from day to day and week to week, in meetings, in communications, in the, your website and everything that you do, that you correlate it with your co company culture to make sure that you are being consistent to the values and norms that you've decided are appropriate for your company. Mistake number six is perfecting your product. Back to the product topic. So I know as an entrepreneur, it's really hard to decide it's ready to go out the door. There's always an inclination for you as an entrepreneur to wanna to add that extra feature or improve that little thing that needs to be improved or, or just wait a little bit longer before you actually launch the product. You can get into a lot of trouble if you spend too much time perfecting your product before you put it in the hands of customers. It's putting it in the hands of customers that's gonna give you the information you really need to make your product better and better. So instead of spending all of your time inside the walls of your business trying to perfect your product, you gotta make sure that you ship it. So as my friend Guy Kawasaki likes to say, ship then test. Or as Reid Hoffman has said, if you are not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. Way too often we've seen companies that have a great product potential, but they spend so much time inside perfecting the product, they don't get it out in the customer's hands. Time passes, they burn through money, and they wind up missing the window to launch their company. So get it out there, get it in the hands of customers, and then iterate the product. Don't try to perfect it in the first launch. Mistake number seven. Mistake number seven is a lack of operational discipline. Now we know a lot of entrepreneurs love the idea of a startup company because it gives them the opportunity to be their own boss. You know, they don't have the big man in the corporate setup that is crushing them. Now we're free to be entrepreneurs and happy visionaries. But the reality is, if you're gonna scale your company, you have to have operational discipline. You've got to learn to put in place the systems and processes that are necessary to scale your company. So what we recommend is that from day one, you instrument your business. What I mean by that is you measure the things that are most important, the key performance indicators. And you manage your company in a disciplined way by putting together a dashboard of your key performance indicators and measuring your progress day to day, week to week, month to month, quarter to quarter, year to year. 
So we encourage companies to put together a dashboard across all of the aspects of their business so that you can, on a regular basis, be monitoring how are you doing in each area of the company that's critical for you to be able to scale. Being an entrepreneur means, yes, you have more freedom and flexibility to pursue those things you want to pursue, but it doesn't mean you can avoid operational discipline. What we see is in the best entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs who start day one with this discipline of managing against key performance indicators of having a management dashboard to see how, they're, how they've been doing and to help them make sure they're going in the right direction. Mistake number eight is a lack of financial discipline. So this is an extension on the requirement that you be operationally disciplined. We want you to be financially disciplined as well. What does that mean? What that means that you as an entrepreneur should know your economics. You should know the financial numbers, the economic numbers that are critical to your success. You cannot abdicate your financial understanding to a part-time accountant. You cannot abdicate it to an Excel spreadsheet. As an entrepreneur, you better know all of these numbers that we've been talking about. Who is your target market? What is your revenue projection? What are your unit economics? How much capital are you gonna require? So all of these numbers are things that should be at the tip of your tongue as an entrepreneur. You need to know your economics. Mistake number nine. Mistake number nine is a failure to wow. What do I mean by that? So it's not good enough as an entrepreneur to be a really good entrepreneur, to have a really good pitch deck, to have a really good product. That's not good enough. You have to stand out from the rest of the crowd. It's really competitive out there. There are lots of entrepreneurs out there that are banging on the door of your target customers and trying to get them to buy something else. There are lots of entrepreneurs that, out there who are banging on our door and other venture capitalist door, trying to raise capital. So, and there are a lot of good serial entrepreneurs who have experience doing this before. You have to make sure that you can stand out from above the rest of that crowd. How do you stand out? Well, <clears throat> the most important thing as an entrepreneur is you have to have a compelling value proposition. You've got to have a value proposition that says, look, we're going to increase the value to our target customer base by a factor of 10x. So you've got to have this compelling value proposition. But in order to communicate what it is you're doing and why it's so amazing, in order to get people who are listening to you to say, wow, that's incredible, you can do that? Tell me more. What you have to do is first, you have to be able to clearly state exactly what it is you're doing. It's amazing to us how few entrepreneurs are really good at stating clearly what it is they're doing. You can't just say we have a curve jumping, paradigm shifting, disruptive technology that's going to transform a $3.5 trillion industry. You can't just say that. You've got to be clear what exactly it is that your business is going to do and for whom. And then second, once you're clear what you're doing, you've got to be compelling. This is the part that gets people to say, wow, you've got to have an amazing value proposition that is 10x faster or one tenth the cost or lasts five times longer. Some compelling value proposition. And then thirdly, you hear lots of entrepreneurs with amazing assertions about their technology and their value proposition, give us some evidence that someone other than you believes in this value proposition that you're asserting. Ideally, you've already got some customers or you've got some other evidence from third parties that gives us confidence that what you're saying is true. So in order to separate yourself from the rest of the pack, in order to get us to say, wow, you've got to be clear about what you're doing. You've got to be compelling in delivering your value proposition. And you've got to give us some evidence that, that makes you credible. And then mistake number 10, mistake number 10, is running out of money. The number one cause of death in entrepreneurial startups 
is running out of cash. So that's something that goes back to operational discipline, to financial discipline. You've got to make sure that you are very careful about how you use the money that you have to scale up your company. And so we talk about entrepreneurs learning to love ramen noodles. Just because you raise some venture capital doesn't mean you can just crank up the expenses. You've got to make sure that your expense rate, your burn rate is consistent with your scaling up. And if, if you're going to hit a wall and run out of cash before you hit a major inflection point, before you achieve a major milestone, then you're not going to be able to raise that next round of money. So be very disciplined about your cash. Be very careful how you spend it. Learn to love ramen noodles. So those are the top 10 entrepreneur mistakes. Failure to focus on customers, delusional numbers, messed up fundamentals, bad hiring practices, failure to activate your company culture, shipping too late, lack of operational discipline, lack of financial discipline, failure to wow, and running out of money. So I hope that's useful to you. Hope you enjoy the video and please send us questions. If you've got some questions, if you've got some comments, we'd love to hear them. We love connecting with entrepreneurs all over the planet. So feel free to connect with us. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this session.